Well, hello everyone. A number of you reached out to me to ask if I would do a video on the I-80 tunnel crash in Wyoming. A tragic, tragic uh, event. I'm just going to play this news segment, kind of quickly summarize what's going on, and then get into the engineering and construction aspects that will occur once the recovery work has been completed. Horrific ordeal in Wyoming. Drivers scrambling for safety after a fiery explosion inside a major interstate tunnel. At least two people were killed and several more were injured after the massive car pile up. Drivers and passengers forced to flee the flames and black smoke. What we are learning tonight. So the Wyoming DOT issued this press release. This event occurred on February 14th, 2025 at 1137 a.m. local time. And it was a crash involving several vehicles, including tractor trailers, at mile marker 90.2 of the westbound I-80 lanes in the tunnel. And as a result of the crash, there was an intense fire that, according to the Highway Patrol, burned for over nine hours. So no doubt extensive damage to the tunnel. I've got some photos from Wyoming DOT that they have taken over the weekend. And I wanna to talk to you about what I think the next steps are that will have to be done in order to eventually get this tunnel, this westbound tunnel, reopened on I-80. So this is the area that we're talking about, Green River, Wyoming, which is just west of Rock Springs, Wyoming. I'm going to show you this Google Earth image. So we start out with the tunnel area and we're zooming out. A rather remote area. I've driven through that area a number of times about many years ago. This is the tunnel entrance, the westbound entrance. So this tunnel, there are twin tunnels, eastbound and westbound. They're 1,138 feet long. These tunnels were constructed in 1966. Tunnel diameter is 16 and a quarter feet. Now you'll see that there's a tremendous amount of commercial truck traffic on this I-80 corridor. Current estimates have uh, about 26 vehicles involved in the crash, 16 of which were commercial vehicles, including semis. All right, I'm just going to play this uh, Google Street View, see what it looks like going through the tunnel. Like I said, it's 1,100 feet long. You can see the location of the tunnel ribs, the reinforcing steel that goes around the tunnel. Just some images after the crash, billowing smoke. Again, they think a number of uh, tires were involved in this fire. You just see the extensive damage here. The lighting has been destroyed. No mention of the ventilation system, if there's any damage there. See damage to the tunnel liner, exposed tunnel ribs. So there's some loss of cover, apparently, of the reinforced concrete tunnel liner. According to YDOT structural engineer, the tunnel wall thickness is 15 inches. There was no indication how much concrete cover there was over the initial layer of reinforcing steel in this tunnel liner. But that's going to be one of the things they're going to have to assess is how much damage has occurred to the tunnel liner. So one of the things that Wyoming DOT is talking about doing is using LIDAR. I found this video of a company that does this work with handheld units. You can very quickly compile 3D images of what these tunnels look like in terms of diameter. So I think there's going to be many, many weeks involved just assessing the condition of the tunnel. One of these devices that could be useful here is a device I use in my practice. And it's the Olson Instruments Concrete Thickness Gauge. So you couple of the source, there's a trigger that causes a solenoid to impact the concrete surface. And you introduce a compression wave into the concrete and the device measures the signal return. So you're looking at two-way travel time and you can infer things about the condition of the concrete as well as the thickness. Now, no doubt they're going to be doing some destructive testing as well, taking cores to make sure that there was no damage to the rock behind the tunnel liner and also assessing which areas of the tunnel liner will need to be replaced. So this just shows you one of these portable coring rigs, quite common in engineering construction to do this type of destructive testing. So they're in a scramble to open the eastbound tunnels to two-way traffic. And before they can do that, they've already done the inspection, determined that that tunnel wasn't damaged uh, from the crash and fire. But they'll have to install these median barriers, often called jersey barriers. They're reinforced concrete barriers that'll go down a new median. These will be quite narrow lanes, around 10 to 11 feet, with a clear height of 16 feet. So overweight, 
oversized trucks will be banned and we'll have to take a detour route. So the officials haven't indicated how long they expect the westbound tunnel to be closed, but I can tell you it's going to be at least some number of weeks, likely some number of months before this is fully reopened to traffic. Again, it depends on the extent of the liner damage to the tunnel, but clearly there is some damage. They, they have to assess what's damaged, remove the damaged sections, and reconstruct the damaged sections to repair to working order. So that's not a quick process. It needs to be very deliberative, and uh, it just takes time. So thanks for watching. I want to send a shout out to those of you who have contributed to buy me a coffee. That's a great way to support the channel, as well as those of you who are channel members. I have a lot of interaction with channel members. Uh, they preview videos often a day or two ahead of time, except for breaking news stories like this. I tend to push, push these out as quickly as I can. I want to thank uh, those of you who have also contributed to Super Thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. So I'll continue to follow the story as there are new developments. So please stay tuned for future videos.